Hi everyone, Connor here from Team Block Damon, and welcome to this tutorial on how you can understand and retrieve your staking rewards data on the Solana network, powered by Block Damon's Solana Staking Reporting API. It's worth mentioning that we'll be covering two methods of getting staking rewards data in this video. The first one that we'll be using today always gives you back only the most recent epochs rewards. If you want to get historical data or to aggregate that data to the week or month level, then we'll show you how also through Blockdaemon's history endpoint. Information can be found about both at our doc site, docs.blockdaemon.com, but in today's tutorial, we'll cover exactly how you can retrieve both current and historical staking rewards. Feel free to skip ahead to whichever timestamp is most relevant to you. Overall, this guide will be of value to you if you're an individual, a developer, or an organization aiming to get a clear overview of your Solana staking strategies and potentially integrate this high quality data from the Solana network into your staking reporting activities or your application. For those of you who are new to this data or would like to understand it at a deeper level, we'll briefly cover some Solana specific concepts as a primer before diving deep into the step-by-step -step process. However, this tutorial assumes a basic understanding of Solana staking. But without further ado, let's jump into understanding a bit more about Solana and its rewards. On the Solana blockchain, we encounter a variety of addresses related to staking, which are helpful to understand from the outset. For validators, the key ones are identity and vote key. The identity is the public part of the typical public-private key pair created when a validator is initialized. The vote key is returned by the staking contract when a validator registers. It's this key that delegators input when selecting a validator to delegate to. If you're staking Solana, then it's also important to understand your token account and the stake account. The token account is essentially your Solana wallet, the account you create when you want to transact Sol, Solana's native token. Now, when you decide to stake your Sol and delegate to a validator, a stake account is created. This stake account links your token account to your validator of choice. Hence, one token account can have multiple stake accounts, each corresponding to different validators. This is because you can delegate to multiple validators on Solana, but each time you do so requires a different stake account. When we call the delegator endpoints in Solana's staking API, we input the token account address and get back all stake accounts linked to that token account. This allows you to fetch all your staking rewards from one response, even if you're staking to many validators. This is useful as you can see both your current and historical staking rewards across multiple validators from a single API call. However, before getting started with either the current or historical staking rewards, you must first get a block daemon API key. To do so, follow these steps. As always, we'll start by logging into the block daemon app. Ensure you have your login credentials ready or register if you haven't done so already. Next, navigate through API Connect API keys within the interface. You'll see an option to create an API key. Upon clicking, a dialog box will appear where you'll assign a unique name to your new API key. Once you've decided on a name, click Create API Key. Your new key will then be generated. Copy it by clicking on the key itself. Keep this key safe as we'll be using it shortly. Now, let's dive into the process of accessing your Solana staking reward data for the current epoch for a specific token account. First, we'll refer to the block daemon API documentation. You can find a link to the Solana staking reporting API in the description box of this video. You will find a URL in the get code section. In a few moments, we'll need to copy this snippet of text. We'll now need an API platform to run this request. In this tutorial, I'll be using the Postman desktop app. Navigate to the Authorization tab. Select Type, Bearer Token, and input the API key you previously created in the Block Daemon app. We're making a GET request, so ensure the GET option is selected. Paste the URL snippet from the Block Daemon API documentation into the Request field. Then add your Solana public address. As mentioned, this is also known as your token account address. Now that you've added these details, press Send. Once you've made your request, you'll receive a response that includes key details about your recent stake and rewards. Let's dive into what this data means. The returned data includes your stake account address, the currency, which will be SOL, the total return your staked SOL generated for this particular period of time. Please note the starting and ending timestamps will be the same, as they will both be equal to the time that those rewards were paid out, which is the start of the next epoch. Note that timestamps are given in UTC. 
you will also see the time aggregation unit, which in our case is the epoch, and your starting balance. Looking at the metadata section, you might wonder the difference between the first address and the delegation address shown in the metadata response. In this context, address refers to the stake account, while delegation address is the identity of the validator linked to that stake account. Remember, you can have multiple stake accounts if delegating to multiple validators, which means multiple different delegation addresses displayed in the various metadata fields. Finally, Epoch displays the Epoch number of the collected data. Before we move on to the next section, let's address a common point of confusion in the scenario that you'd like to run this API request with a Solana validator as opposed to a delegator. If you attempt to use the Solana reporting endpoints with the vote key of a validator address, it won't work. However, using the identity address for your validator will. This is because the endpoints are designed to work with the identity address and not the vote key validator address. Now, let's dive into how you'd retrieve previous historical staking rewards. Please ensure you've carried out the prerequisite task of generating your block daemon API key, as outlined earlier in the video. Now, we'll refer to the Block Daemon API documentation. You can find a link to the docs for the historical Solana staking reporting API in the description box of this video. Here, you will find a URL in the Get Code section. In a few moments, we'll need to copy this snippet of text. We'll now need an API platform to run this request. In this tutorial, I'll be using the Postman desktop app. If you haven't already done so, navigate to the authorization tab, select type bearer token and input the API key you previously created in the block daemon app if you haven't done so already. We're making a post request, so ensure the post option is selected. Paste the URL snippet from the block daemon API documentation into the request field. Then finally add your Solana public address. As mentioned, this is also known as your token account address. Next, you'll need to add the time parameters you'd like to query. I'll head over to the body tab within the Postman app. Note that in this section, I've selected raw and JSON options. Now, you'll enter the timestamps using from time and to time parameters, which are outlined in the block daemon docs page. Please note, both of these parameters require timestamps in milliseconds. If you'd like to convert dates and times related to Solana epochs, you can use an online tool such as the one found at epochconverter.com. Let's pause for a moment to see how these parameters work when you're using them. First, we need to understand what an epoch is in Solana. An epoch in Solana is a period of time used for accounting, leader scheduling, and other protocol level functions. It's a significant unit of time in the Solana network. And a new epoch begins every fixed number of slots. A slot is another unit of time in Solana and is the time it takes for a single block to be produced. A slot is a period of time, about 400 milliseconds, allocated for a validator to propose a new block. The network operates under a leader based model in which a different validator is chosen to be the leader for each slot. If you've delegated your stake to a validator chosen to produce a block for a given slot in an epoch, you'll share in the protocol rewards proportional to your stake for that given epoch. So to put it simply, an epoch in Solana is like a day in the Solana blockchain, except it's two actual days long. It's the time period during which certain actions like changes to validator rosters or the deactivation of stakes can take place. Let's say we have an epoch that we'd like to retrieve staking rewards from. In this example, we want to retrieve staking rewards from the Solana epoch 451. In the Solana Explorer, we can clearly see the first block timestamp and the last block timestamp displayed on screen. I'll use epochconverter.com to quickly convert these, which I'll input into from time and to time in our staking rewards API. Note that the time unit parameter can be epoch, week, or month. This parameter is used to aggregate rewards over the specified time period. For example, if the epoch time unit is selected, then the time period will be the epoch for the rewards. In this example, we'll use epoch. Now that we've added these details, I'll press send. Once you've made your request, you'll receive a response that includes key details about your historical stake and rewards. First and foremost, you may notice that the epoch returned is 450 as opposed to 451, which we were looking for. You may be wondering why this is. Simply put, the end of Epoch 450 was two seconds before the time of, of the first block of 451, which was inputted in milliseconds at the start of the time. This means that in the first block of Epoch 451, you as a delegator were paid out the rewards you accrued for Epoch 450. 
Therefore, this is exactly the intended outcome of your query since it captures only the paid out time of the 450 epoch and not the paid out time of the 451 epoch. To get staking reward information for epoch 451, we'll need to look at when rewards for this epoch were paid out in the following epoch, which was 452. To do this, I'll quickly convert the timestamp of the first and last block in epoch 452, the epoch when rewards for the previous epoch were delivered. Input these into the API request and press send. We can see that the staking data rewards for the previous epoch are now successfully returned. Now that we have that clarified, let's take a closer look at the rest of the information returned. A lot of this is similar to the previous API call, but let's dive deep into what this data means for you. The returned data includes your stake account address, the currency, which will be SOL, and the total return your stake SOL generated for this particular period of time. As mentioned, if you're querying for epoch level reporting, the starting and ending timestamps will be both equal to the time that those rewards were paid out, which is the start of the next epoch. As explained previously, if you're looking at the metadata section, you might wonder about the difference between the first address and the delegation address shown in the metadata response. In this context, address refers to the stake account, while delegation address is the identity of the validator linked to that stake account. Remember, you can have multiple stake accounts if delegating to multiple validators, which means multiple different delegation addresses displayed in the various metadata fields. Finally, epoch displays the epoch number of the collected data. We hope this guide provides a clear understanding of how to access staking reward data on the Solana network using Blockdaemon's API infrastructure. As always, we're here to support you in your staking journey and be sure to subscribe for more in-depth staking videos. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to get in touch. But until next time, we wish you successful staking.